Miss Christina Hadley Dyke Roosevelt. I am a costume technologist that has been exploring the world of wearable technology. Today, I will present my newest build, a cycling shrug that features blinkers and a caution triangle controlled by buttons and a flex sensor. I am an avid cyclist and have always wanted to create this project. Welcome to Elements 14 Presents. Let's get started with the supplies we need to gather to actualize this shrug. The supplies we will need to gather are lycra, power mesh, a shrug or jacket pattern, thread, a separating zipper, velcro, and some biking gloves to build the cycling shrug. You can also buy a pre-made jacket and add the circle on top. However, I find it's easier when a garment can be laid flat to top apply the circuit components. The other components that fabulize the cycling shrug are an Arduino Mini Pro, a battery, a strip of individually addressable NeoPixel LEDs, buttons, a short flex sensor, wire, resistors, heat shrink of different sizes, JST male-female connectors, double-sided printed circuit boards, reflective tape, and solder. Finally, the equipment that assists me in creating the cycling shrug are a sewing machine, serger, soldering iron and tools, dremel, heat gun, wire strippers, cutters, and needle nose pliers. I began this project by flat patterning the shrug and then cut the pattern pieces out of lycra power mesh fabric. I then half assembled the shrug so that I could easily lay the garment flat and top apply all the different circuit pieces before finishing the garment. I also created a small pouch with a front pocket so that the board and battery would be held together when removed from the shrug. I started with the placement and design of the LEDs, board, buttons, and flex sensor. I knew that I'd want the board battery, buttons, and flex sensor to be completely removable so that the garment could be washed. Nobody likes a stinky bike outfit. Next, I cut my LED strips to the lengths I decided on for the design and soldered them together. To solder them together, you must first clear away the silicone waterproof protective layer, exposing the solder points. When soldering together, it is important to ensure proper direction of flow by checking that the orientation arrows all face the same direction. Additionally, I soldered the 5 volt to the 5 volt, the data to the data, and the ground to the ground. I left a length of wire at the beginning so I could easily breadboard my project. I then created the breadboard to test the LEDs and code. Once I was happy with the code and wiring diagram, I soldered the buttons and flex sensor onto their own double-sided PCB that would eventually be sewn onto the biking glove. Let's take a closer look at these boards. 
I started by cutting a double-sided PCB with a Dremel to the size I had determined. I then sanded the edges with the Dremel to make sure that all edges were smooth. I placed all the components onto the PCB and bent the ends so that they would not move while I was soldering. I then proceeded to solder all the points needed. I made sure to have extra wire at the connection points so I could still easily plug into a breadboard to check the wiring. The flex sensor attachment prongs are delicate and will need to be reinforced. I will do this by adding a second PCB layer to the original board to support the base of the sensor. This will provide extra support as the sensor will be repeatedly flexed and straightened by my hand. Since the board and battery would be taken off the garment, I decided to use JST connectors to easily attach and detach all components. Once I confirmed the connections and wiring of the button and flex sensor board, I soldered the JST connectors onto each of the wire ends. Let's take a look at how we use these JST connectors. With these JST connectors, there are four prongs creating two folding sections. The two prongs at the end are folded around the silicone part of the wire, and the other two prongs are folded around the strip wire. I tin the edge of my stripped wire to then solder to the metal connector to help strengthen the bond. Next, you slip the metal piece into the plastic housing. On the top of either pin, there is an extra metal small prong that sticks up. This metal piece must be placed in the housing correctly so that the wire does not fall out of the plastic housing. I make sure to note which wire is in which position so that I never cross my wires and my data always flows smoothly. Once I had all the different pieces of the circuit soldered, I laid them out on the garment to begin to map out the wiring route. I also had to make sure that there was enough extra wire in place so that when the garment stretched, 
the wiring did not have pressure on the solder points and was free to move as the garment moved. This is crucial to pay attention to for any wearable technology, especially for circuits built on stretch material. I used pins to create the wiring channels and make sure that even if the garment stretched, there would be enough extra wire. While creating these channels, I soldered the LED strips on the back of the garment to connect up with the board on the forearm of the sleeve. I also connected the three 5 volt and ground solder points from the three different strips so that there was only five wires running down the arm instead of nine. Once I had all the circuits completed, I connected everything together and double checked all wiring one last time before heat shrinking all the solder points. Because I didn't want to fully lose my mapped out channels, I carefully used the heat gun to shrink the solder points heat shrink and not burn or melt the fabric. I hand stitched the flex sensor board onto the middle finger part of the biking glove. I created a channel out of reflective tape for the wiring to be encased in. That way, the wire would not be flapping around. I then sewed the button board onto the side of the pointer finger so that my thumb could easily activate either button as desired. I hand basted the LEDs in place so they would not move while I was machine sewing them later. I top applied power mesh over the LEDs and top stitch channels around each of the strips to keep them in place. Next, I covered the wiring channel that traveled down the arm by top applying lycra and top stitching the edge. Now all the wiring on the back and arm is encased. I finished sewing the shrug together and connected all the points to try on my shrug for the very first time. Come on a ride with me while I take my new garment out for a test ride. 